Hello and welcome to Compensation in Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff. I'm the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Compensation in the body occurs because we want to be able to maintain homeostasis when we move from one position to another. So when you take a look at these diagrams here and you see we have our heart rate, let's go to the right, the heart rate and our blood pressure when the patient is laying down. Now in order to maintain that same blood pressure as we sit up and then as we stand, the heart rate would increase. We also get some vasoconstriction as well. But you notice the difference in the heart rates there. When she's laying flat, her heart rate is 72. When she moves to the sitting position, her heart rate moves up to 83. And then in the standing position at 123. Now, you may take your heart rate right now and say, well, my resting heart rate while I'm standing isn't 123. The point of this is to show that there is differences that occur within the body in order to be able to accommodate those changes in different position. This is what we call compensation. Now, in a patient who has heart failure, so we have a situation that occurs here where there's damage to the myocardium and that causes the patient to have some kind of damage and decreased cardiac output. So in those kind of situations, now we have a situation where the heart cannot compensate and we have decreased pumping ability and decreased cardiac output. So in the same way that you stand up suddenly and the cardiac output goes down because you stood up suddenly and you redistributed the fluid in your body, the heart is going to have that same kind of effect on the body when there's damage that's occurring to the myocardium. In either situation, compensation occurs. So let's take a look at those compensatory mechanisms. Cardiac, a decrease in cardiac output will stimulate this compensation to happen, whether it's from standing up suddenly or from some kind of cardiac event. So what is this compensation? First of all, we have the sympathetic nervous system and the sympathetic nervous system is going to increase our heart rate and increase blood pressure. And it's going to do so by causing vasoconstriction, for one. So you see these two blood vessels here. We have the normal blood vessel at the top, and we have vasoconstriction on the bottom. With the normal blood vessel, we have more blood bringing oxygen to the tissues. Smiley little red blood cell there. In the vasoconstriction, we have less blood bringing oxygen to the tissues, as you see with the little frowny face oxygen there. So less oxygen getting to the tissues, and therefore we can't provide enough perfusion to the tissues in the body. Next, we have the renin-angiotensin system, and the renin-angiotensin system causes two things to happen, vasoconstriction and fluid retention. Vasoconstriction, well, we just heard about that. That was just happening with the sympathetic nervous system, too. So now we have a secondary condition that is causing vasoconstriction as well, further limiting the amount of blood flow to the tissues of the body. We also have aldosterone. So aldosterone is going to be released, and that's going to cause fluid retention. So the results from these effects from the kidney is that we have decreased cardiac output, and that decreased cardiac output is going to stimulate renin production. Renin production, or renin then, goes to the lung, and the lung is going to convert that using an angiotensin converting enzyme to angiotensin. And that's what's causing our vasoconstriction. So that's the kidney part of this, and you see the lung is involved there too. So now we have even more vasoconstriction going on. So our normal blood flow and getting that oxygen in the tissues is not going to happen quite the way we'd like it to happen because we have vasoconstriction occurring out there and even less blood flow getting to the tissues.
So our compensatory mechanism is really not helping a lot in a patient who has decreased cardiac output because remember, this vasoconstriction and limits on our oxygen supply to the tissue is also happening to the heart muscle, which is already damaged. Angiotensin then causes the adrenals to produce aldosterone, and then aldosterone coming from the adrenals is going to cause the renal retention of fluid. Now normally this process would occur if you were dehydrated and you'd be hanging onto more fluid to try to maintain that cardiac output because you have decreased fluid in the body. Now in this case here we have an injured heart that's stimulating aldosterone and renal retention of fluid. Well we don't need more fluid. As a matter of fact we already have more fluid than the heart can pump. So that means that this extra fluid that's on board is going to start to become a problem. It's going to start to cause edema and possibly pulmonary edema. So our compensatory mechanisms, fluid retention and vasoconstriction, are similar to having a fire hose. We're trying to drink from the fire hose over here on the right side of the heart. And then on the left side of the heart, it's like we put a clamp on the vasculature so think about what this is doing to the heart. The heart's already injured, and now we're pouring more fluid into it and at the same time clamping that arterial system so it's harder to pump. So these compensatory mechanisms that occur in heart failure really don't help. So what we'd like to do in order to treat that is we'd like to remove that extra fluid by using diuretics, and using venous vasodilators to kind of open up that system, pull that fluid away from the heart. And on the vasoconstriction side, we'd like to cause some arterial vasodilation. Now we can do that with a medication or we can also do that by increasing cardiac output so that we don't have that stimulus to cause vasoconstriction. Thank you for joining me for Compensation in Heart Failure. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.